This article compares two programming languages, C# -sharp with Java. While the focus of this article is mainly the languages and their features, such a comparison will necessarily also consider some features of platforms and libraries. For a more detailed comparison of the platforms, please see comparison of the Java and .NET platforms. C Sharp and Java are similar languages that are typed statically, strongly, and manifestly. Both are object-oriented, and designed with semi-interpretation or runtime just-in-time compilation, and both are curly brace languages, like C and C++. Types. <laughs> <laughs> topic unified type system both languages are statically typed with class based object orientation in java the primitive types are special in that they are not object oriented and they could not have been defined using the language itself they also do not share a common ancestor with reference types the Java reference types all derive from a common root type. C# -sharp has a unified type system in which all types besides unsafe pointers ultimately derive from a common root type. Consequently, all types implement the methods of this root type, and extension methods defined for the object type apply to all types, even primitive int literals and delegates. This allows C Sharp, unlike Java, to support objects with encapsulation that are not reference types. In Java, compound types are synonymous with reference types. Methods cannot be defined for a type unless it is also a class reference type. In C Sharp, the concepts of encapsulation and methods have been decoupled from the reference requirement so that a type can support methods and encapsulation without being a reference type. Only reference types support virtual methods and specialization, however. Both languages support many built SAN types that are copied and passed by value rather than by reference. Java calls these types primitive types, while they are called simple types in C Sharp. The primitive, simple types typically have native support from the underlying processor architecture. The C# -sharp simple types implement several interfaces and consequently offer many methods directly on instances of the types, even on the literals. The C# -sharp type names are also merely aliases for common language runtime (CLR) types. The C# -sharp system int64 type is exactly the same type as the long type. The only difference is that the former is the canonical .NET name, while the latter is a C# -sharp alias for it. Java does not offer methods directly on primitive types. Instead, methods that operate on primitive values are offered through companion primitive wrapper classes. A fixed set of such wrapper classes exist, each of which wraps one of the fixed set of primitive types. As an example, the Java long type is a reference type that wraps the primitive long type. They are not the same type, however. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Data types. topic numeric types topic signed integers both java and c sharp support signed integers with bit widths of 8 16 32 and 64 bits 
They use the same name, aliases for the types, except for the 8-bit integer that is called a byte in Java and a subyte signed byte in C Sharp. Topic: <laughs> Unsigned integers. C# -sharp supports unsigned in addition to the signed integer types. The unsigned types are byte, u short, uint and ulong for 8, 16, 32 and 64 bit widths, respectively. Unsigned arithmetic operating on the types are supported as well. For example, adding two unsigned integers UINTS still yields a UINT as a result, not a long or signed integer. Java does not feature unsigned integer types. In particular, Java lacks a primitive type for an unsigned byte. Instead, Java's byte type is sign extended, which is a common source of bugs and confusion. Unsigned integers were left out of Java deliberately because James Gosling believed that programmers would not understand how unsigned arithmetic works. In programming language design, one of the standard problems is that the language grows so complex that nobody can understand it. One of the little experiments I tried was asking people about the rules for unsigned arithmetic in C. It turns out nobody understands how unsigned arithmetic in C works. There are a few obvious things that people understand, but many people don't understand it. Topic: <laughs> High precision decimal numbers. C# -sharp has a type and literal notation for high precision 28 decimal digits decimal arithmetic that is appropriate for financial and monetary calculations. Contrary to the float and double data types, decimal fractional numbers such as 0.1 can be represented exactly in the decimal representation. In the float and double representations, such numbers often have non-terminating binary expansions, making those representations more prone to round-off errors. While Java lacks such a built-in type, the Java library does feature an arbitrary precision decimal type. This is not considered a language type and it does not support the usual arithmetic operators, rather it is a reference type that must be manipulated using the type methods. See more about arbitrary size, precision numbers below. <laughs> Advanced numeric types Both languages offer library-defined arbitrary precision arithmetic types for arbitrary size integers and decimal point calculations. Only Java has a data type for arbitrary precision decimal point calculations. Only C# -sharp has a type for working with complex numbers. In both languages, the number of operations that can be performed on the advanced numeric types is limited compared to the built SAN IEEE 754 floating point types. For instance, none of the arbitrary size types support square root or logarithms. C# -sharp allows library defined types to be integrated with existing types and operators by using custom implicit explicit conversions and operator overloading. See example in section integration of library defined types. Topic: <laughs> Characters both languages feature a native char character data type as a simple type. 
Although the char type can be used with bitwise operators, this is performed by promoting the char value to an integer value before the operation. Thus, the result of a bitwise operation is a numeric type, not a character, in both languages. Topic: <laughs> Built SAN compound data types. Both languages treat strings as immutable objects of reference type. In both languages, the type contains several methods to manipulate strings, pass, format, etc. In both languages regular expressions are considered an external feature and are implemented in separate classes. Both languages' libraries define classes for working with dates and calendars in different cultures. The Java Java, util, date is a mutable reference type, whereas the C Sharp system, date time is a struct value type. C Sharp additionally defines a time span type for working with time periods. Both languages support date and time arithmetic according to different cultures. Topic: <laughs> User defined value type struct. C# -sharp allows the programmer to create user defined value types using the struct keyword. Unlike classes and like the standard primitives, such value types are passed and assigned by value rather than by reference. They can also be part of an object either as a field or boxed, or stored in an array without the memory indirection that normally exists for class types. Because value types have no notion of a null value and can be used in arrays without initialization, they always come with an implicit default constructor that essentially fills the struct memory space with zeros. The programmer can only define additional constructors with one or more arguments. Value types do not have virtual method tables, and because of that and the fixed memory footprint, they are implicitly sealed. However, value types can and frequently do implement interfaces. For example, the built-in integer types implement several interfaces. Apart from the built in primitive types, Java does not include the concept of value types. <laughs> Enumerations Both languages define enumerations, but they are implemented in fundamentally different ways. As such, enumerations are one area where tools designed to automatically translate code between the two languages such as Java to C# converters fail. C# has implemented enumerations in a manner similar to C, that is as wrappers around the bit flags implemented in primitive integral types int, byte, short, etc. This has performance benefits and improves interaction with C, C++ compiled code, but provides fewer features and can lead to bugs if low-level value types are directly cast to an enumeration type, as is allowed in the c -sharp language. Therefore, it is seen as syntactic sugar. In contrast, Java implements enumerations as full-featured collection of instances, requiring more memory and not aiding interaction with C, C++ code, but providing additional features in reflection and intrinsic behavior. The implementation in each language is described in the table below. In both C# -sharp and Java, programmers can use enumerations in a switch statement without conversion to a string or primitive integer type. 
However, C-sharp disallows implicit fall-through unless the case statement does not contain any code, as it is a common cause of hard-to-find bugs. Fall-through must be explicitly declared using a go-to statement. Topic: <laughs> Delegates, method references. C# -sharp implements object-oriented method pointers in the form of delegates. A delegate is a special type that can capture a type safe reference to a method. This reference can then be stored in a delegate type variable or passed to a method through a delegate parameter for later invocation. C# -sharp delegates support covariance and contravariance and can hold a reference to any signature compatible static method, instance method, anonymous method or lambda expression. Delegates should not be confused with closures and inline functions. The concepts are related because a reference to a closure – inline function must be captured in a delegate reference to be useful at all. But a delegate does not always reference an inline function, it can also reference existing static or instance methods. Delegates form the basis of C-sharp events, but should not be confused with those either. Delegates were deliberately left out of Java because they were considered unnecessary and detrimental to the language, and because of potential performance issues. Instead, alternative mechanisms are used. The wrapper pattern, which resembles the delegates of C Sharp in that it allows the client to access one or more client defined methods through a known interface, is one such mechanism. Another is the use of adapter objects using inner classes, which the designers of Java argued are a better solution than bound method references. See also example C# -sharp delegates and equivalent Java constructs. Topic lifted nullable types C# -sharp allows value primitive simple types to be lifted to allow the special null value in addition to the type's native values. A type is lifted by adding a suffix to the type name. This is equivalent to using the nullable generic type where t is the type to be lifted. Conversions are implicitly defined to convert between values of the base and the lifted type. The lifted type can be compared against null or it can be tested for hash value. Also, lifted operators are implicitly and automatically defined based on their non-lifted base, where, with the exception of some Boolean operators, a null argument will propagate to the result. Java does not support type lifting as a concept, but all of the built SAN primitive types have corresponding wrapper types, which do support the null value by virtue of being reference types classes. According to the Java spec, any attempt to dereference the null reference must result in an exception being thrown at run time, specifically a null pointer exception. It would not make sense to dereference it otherwise, because, by definition, it points to no object in memory. This also applies when attempting to unbox a variable of a wrapper type, which evaluates to null, the program will throw an exception because there is no object to be unboxed, and thus no boxed value to take part in the subsequent computation. The following example illustrates the different behavior. In C Sharp, the lifted asterisk operator propagates the null value of the operand. In Java, inboxing the null reference throws an exception. Not all C# -sharp lifted operators have been defined to propagate null unconditionally if one of the operands is null. Specifically, the boolean operators have been lifted to support ternary logic thus keeping impedance with SQL. 
the Java Boolean operators do not support ternary logic, nor is it implemented in the base class library. Topic: <laughs> Late bound dynamic type. C# -sharp features a late bound dynamic type that supports no reflection dynamic invocation, interoperability with dynamic languages, and ad hoc binding to, for example, document object models. The dynamic type resolves member access dynamically at runtime as opposed to statically virtual at compile time. The member lookup mechanism is extensible with traditional reflection as a fallback mechanism. There are several use cases for the dynamic type in C sharp. Less verbose use of reflection by casting an instance to the dynamic type, members such as properties, methods, events, etc., can be directly invoked on the instance without using the reflection API directly. Interoperability with dynamic languages The dynamic type comes with a hub and spoke support for implementing dynamically typed objects and common runtime infrastructure for efficient member lookup. Creating dynamic abstractions on the fly, for instance, a dynamic object could provide simpler access to document object models such as XML or XHTML documents. Java does not support a late bound type. The use cases for C sharp dynamic type have different corresponding constructs in Java. For dynamic late bound by name invocation of pre existing types, reflection should be used. For interoperability with dynamic languages, some form of interoperability API specific to that language must be used. The Java Virtual Machine platform does have multiple dynamic languages implemented on it, but there is no common standard for how to pass objects between languages. Usually this involves some form of reflection or reflection-like API. As an example of how to use Java FX objects from Java. For creating and interacting with objects entirely at runtime, e.g., interaction with a document object model abstraction, a specific abstraction API must be used. See also example hashtag interoperability with dynamic languages. Topic <laughs> pointers. Java precludes pointers and pointer arithmetic within the Java runtime environment. The Java language designers reasoned that pointers are one of the main features that enable programmers to put bugs in their code and chose not to support them. Java does not allow for directly passing and receiving objects, structures to, from the underlying operating system and thus does not need to model objects, structures to such a specific memory layout, layouts that frequently would involve pointers. Java's communication with the underlying operating system is instead based upon Java Native Interface where communication with, adaptation to an underlying operating system is handled through an external glue layer. While C# -sharp does allow use of pointers and corresponding pointer arithmetic, the C# -sharp language designers had the same concerns that pointers could potentially be used to bypass the strict rules for object access. Thus, C# -sharp by default also precludes pointers. However, because pointers are needed when calling many native functions, pointers are allowed in an explicit unsafe mode. 
Code blocks or methods that use the pointers must be marked with the unsafe keyword to be able to use pointers, and the compiler requires the unsafe switch to allow compiling such code. Assemblies that are compiled using the unsafe switch are marked as such and may only execute if explicitly trusted. This allows using pointers and pointer arithmetic to directly pass and receive objects to, from the operating system or other native APIs using the native memory layout for those objects while also isolating such potentially unsafe code in specifically trusted assemblies. Reference types. In both languages references are a central concept. All instances of classes are by reference. While not directly evident in the language syntax per se, both languages support the concept of weak references. An instance that is only referenced by weak references is eligible for garbage collection just as if there were no references at all. In both languages this feature is exposed through the associated libraries, even though it is really a core runtime feature. Along with weak references, Java has soft references. They are much like weak references, but the JVM will not deallocate softly referenced objects until the memory is needed. Topic: Arrays and collections. Arrays and collections are concepts featured by both languages. The syntax used to declare and access arrays is identical, except that C# -sharp has added syntax for declaring and manipulating multidimensional arrays. Multidimensional arrays can in some cases increase performance because of increased locality as there is one pointer dereference instead of one for every dimension of the array, as it is the case for jagged arrays. However, since all array element access in a multidimensional array requires multiplication, shift between the two or more dimensions, this is an advantage only in very random access scenarios. Another difference is that the entire multidimensional array can be allocated with a single application of operator new, while jagged arrays require loops and allocations for every dimension. However, Java provides a syntactic construct for allocating a jagged array with regular lengths. The loops and multiple allocations are then performed by the virtual machine and need not be explicit at the source level. Both languages feature an extensive set of collection types that includes various ordered and unordered types of lists, maps, dictionaries, sets, etc. Java also supports the syntax of C, C++. Topic: Expressions and operators. Topic: Boxing and unboxing. Both languages allow automatic boxing and inboxing, i.e. they allow for implicit casting between any primitive types and the corresponding reference types. In c -sharp, the primitive types are subtypes of the object type. In Java this is not true, any given primitive type and the corresponding wrapper type have no specific relationship with each other, except for autoboxing and inboxing, which act as syntactic sugar for interchanging between them. 
This was done intentionally, to maintain backward compatibility with prior versions of Java, in which no automatic casting was allowed, and the programmer worked with two separate sets of types, the primitive types, and the wrapper reference type hierarchy. This difference has the following consequences. First of all, in C sharp, primitive types can define methods, such as an override of objects to string method. In Java, this task is accomplished by the primitive wrapper classes. Secondly, in Java an extra cast is needed whenever one tries to directly dereference a primitive value, as it will not be boxed automatically. The expression integer 42 to string will convert an integer literal to string in Java while 42 to string performs the same operation in C#. -sharp. This is because the latter one is an instance call on the primitive value 42 while the former one is an instance call on an object of type java.lang.integer. Finally, another difference is that Java makes heavy use of box types in generics. See below. Topic: Statements. Topic: Syntax. Both languages are considered curly brace languages in the C, C++ family. Overall the syntaxes of the languages are very similar. The syntax at the statement and expression level is almost identical with obvious inspiration from the C, C++ tradition. At type definition level classes and interfaces some minor differences exist. Java is explicit about extending classes and implementing interfaces, while c -sharp infers this from the kind of types a new class, interface derives from. c -sharp supports more features than Java, which to some extent is also evident in the syntax that specifies more keywords and more grammar rules than Java. Topic: Keywords and backward compatibility. As the languages evolved, the language designers for both languages have faced situations where they wanted to extend the languages with new keywords or syntax. New keywords in particular may break existing code at source level, i.e. older code may no longer compile, if presented to a compiler for a later version of the language. Language designers are keen to avoid such regressions. The designers of the two languages have been following different paths when addressing this problem. Java language designers have avoided new keywords as much as possible, preferring instead to introduce new syntactic constructs that were not legal before or to reuse existing keywords in new contexts. This way they didn't jeopardize backward compatibility. An example of the former can be found in how the for loop was extended to accept iterable types. An example of the latter can be found in how the extends and especially the super keywords were reused for specifying type bounds when generics were introduced in Java 1.5. At one time Java 1 a new keyword assert was introduced that was not reserved as a keyword before. This had the potential to render previously valid code invalid, if for instance the code used assert as an identifier. 
The designers chose to address this problem with a four-step solution, one introducing a compiler switch that indicates if Java 1.4 or later should be used, two only marking assert as a keyword when compiling as Java 1.4 and later, three defaulting to 1.3 to avoid rendering previous non aware code invalid and four issue warnings, if the keyword is used in Java 1.3 mode, in order to allow the developers to change the code. C-sharp language designers have introduced several new keywords since the first version. However, instead of defining these keywords as global keywords, they define them as context-sensitive keywords. This means that even when they introduced among others the partial and yield keywords in C# 2.0 the use of those words as identifiers is still valid as there is no clash possible between the use as keyword and the use as identifier given the context Thus, the present c -sharp syntax is fully backward compatible with source code written for any previous version without specifying the language version to be used. <laughs> <laughs> Object-oriented programming Both C# -sharp and Java are designed from the ground up as object-oriented languages using dynamic dispatch with syntax similar to C++. C++ in turn derives from C. Neither language is a superset of C or C++. However, topic: <laughs> partial class C# -sharp allows a class definition to be split across several source files using a feature called partial classes. Each part must be marked with the keyword partial. All the parts must be presented to the compiler as part of a single compilation. Parts can reference members from other parts. Parts can implement interfaces and one part can define a base class. The feature is useful in code generation scenarios such as user interface UI design, where a code generator can supply one part and the developer another part to be compiled together. The developer can thus edit their part without the risk of a code generator overwriting that code at some later time. Unlike the class extension mechanism, a partial class allows circular dependencies among its parts as they are guaranteed to be resolved at compile time. Java has no corresponding concept. topic inner and local classes both languages allow inner classes where a class is defined lexically inside another class however in each language these inner classes have rather different semantics in Java, unless the inner class is declared static, a reference to an instance of an inner class carries a reference to the outer class with it. As a result, code in the inner class has access to both the static and non-static members of the outer class. To create an instance of a non-static inner class, the instance of the embracing outer class must be named. This is done via a new new operator introduced in JDK 1.3, outer class instance. New outer, inner class. This can be done in any class that has a reference to an instance of the outer class. In C, -sharp, an inner class is conceptually the same as a normal class. In a sense, the outer class only acts as a namespace. 
Thus, code in the inner class cannot access non-static members of the outer class unless it does so through an explicit reference to an instance of the outer class. Programmers can declare the inner class private to allow only the outer class to have any access to it. Java provides another feature called local classes or anonymous classes, which can be defined within a method body. These are generally used to implement an interface with only one or two methods, which are typically event handlers. However, they can also be used to override virtual methods of a superclass. The methods in those local classes have access to the outer method's local variables declared final. C# -sharp satisfies the use cases for these by providing anonymous delegates. See event handling for more about this. C# -sharp also provides a feature called anonymous types classes, but it is rather different from Java's concept with the same name. It allows the programmer to instantiate a class by providing only a set of names for the properties the class should have, and an expression to initialize each. The types of the properties are inferred from the types of those expressions. These implicitly declared classes are derived directly from object. Event C# -sharp multicast delegates are used with events. Events provide support for event-driven programming and are an implementation of the observer pattern. To support this there is a specific syntax to define events in classes, and operators to register, unregister or combine event handlers. See here for information about how events are implemented in Java. Topic operator overloading and conversions Operator overloading and user-defined casts are separate features that both aim to allow new types to become first-class citizens in the type system. By using these features in C Sharp, types such as complex and decimal have been integrated so that the usual operators like addition and multiplication work with the new types. Unlike C, C Sharp does restrict the use of operator overloading, prohibiting it for the operators new, and and, equals, and any variations of compound statements like plus equals but compound operators will call overloaded simple operators, like calling, and Java does not include operator overloading, nor custom conversions in order to prevent abuse of the feature and to keep the language simple. Indexer C# -sharp also includes indexes that can be considered a special case of operator overloading like the C++ operator or parameterized get set properties. An indexer is a property named this that uses one or more parameters indexes. The indices can be objects of any type. Java does not include indexes. The common Java pattern involves writing explicit getters and setters where a C# -sharp programmer would use an indexer. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Fields and initialization. Topic: <laughs> Object initialization 
In both C# -sharp and Java, an object's fields can be initialized either by variable initializers, expressions that can be assigned to variables where they are defined, or by constructors, special subroutines that are executed when an object is being created. In addition, Java contains instance initializers, which are anonymous blocks of code with no arguments that are run after the explicit or implicit call to a superclass's constructor but before the constructor is executed. C# -sharp initializes object fields in the following order when creating an object. Derived static fields Derived static constructor Derived instance fields Base static fields Base static constructor Base instance fields Base instance constructor Derived instance constructor some of the above fields may not be applicable e.g. if an object does not have static fields Derived fields are those that are defined in the object's direct class, while base field is a term for the fields that are defined in one of the object's superclasses. Note that an object representation in memory contains all fields defined in its class or any of its superclasses, even, if some fields in superclasses are defined as private. It is guaranteed that any field initializers take effect before any constructors are called, since both the instance constructor of the object's class and its superclasses are called after field initializers are called. There is, however, a potential trap in object initialization when a virtual method is called from a base constructor. The overridden method in a subclass may reference a field that is defined in the subclass, but this field may not have been initialized because the constructor of the subclass that contains field initialization is called after the constructor of its base class. In Java, the order of initialization is as follows. Invocation of another constructor either of the object's class or of the object's superclass Instance variable initializes and instance initializes in the order they appear in the source code The constructor body like in C# a new object is created by calling a specific constructor Within a constructor, the first statement may be an invocation of another constructor. If this is omitted, the call to the argumentless constructor of the superclass is added implicitly by the compiler. Otherwise, either another overloaded constructor of the object's class can be called explicitly, or a superclass constructor can be called. In the former case, the called constructor will again call another constructor either of the object's class or its subclass and the chain sooner or later ends up at the call to one of the constructors of the superclass. After another constructor is called that causes direct invocation of the superclass constructor, and so forth, down to the object class, instance variables defined in the object's class are initialized. Even if there are no variable initializers explicitly defined for some variables, these variables are initialized to default values. Note that instance variables defined in superclasses are already initialized by this point, because they were initialized by a superclass constructor when it was called either by the constructor's code or by variable initializers performed before the constructor's code or implicitly to default values. In Java, variable initializers are executed according to their textual order in the source file. Finally, the constructor body is executed. 
This ensures proper order of initialization, i.e. the fields of a base class finish initialization before initialization of the fields of an object class begins. There are two main potential traps in Java's object initialization. First, variable initializers are expressions that can contain method calls. Since methods can reference any variable defined in the class, the method called in a variable initializer can reference a variable that is defined below the variable being initialized. Since initialization order corresponds to textual order of variable definitions, such a variable would not be initialized to the value prescribed by its initializer and would contain the default value. Another potential trap is when a method that is overridden in the derived class is called in the base class constructor, which can lead to behavior the programmer would not expect when an object of the derived class is created. According to the initialization order, the body of the base class constructor is executed before variable initializers are evaluated and before the body of the derived class constructor is executed. The overridden method called from the base class constructor can, however, reference variables defined in the derived class, but these are not yet initialized to the values specified by their initializers or set in the derived class constructor. The latter issue applies to C# -sharp as well, but in a less critical form since in C# -sharp methods are not overridable by default. Topic: Resource disposal. Both languages mainly use garbage collection as a means of reclaiming memory resources, rather than explicit deallocation of memory. In both cases, if an object holds resources of different kinds other than memory, such as file handles, graphical resources, etc., then it must be notified explicitly when the application no longer uses it. Both C# -sharp and Java offer interfaces for such deterministic disposal and both C# -sharp and Java since Java 7 feature automatic resource management statements that will automatically invoke the disposal close methods on those interfaces. Topic: <laughs> Methods topic extension methods and default methods using a special this designator on the first parameter of a method c# -sharp allows the method to act as if it were a member method of the type of the first parameter this extension of the foreign class is purely syntactical the extension method must be declared static and defined within a purely static class. The method must obey any member access restriction like any other method external to the class, thus static methods cannot break object encapsulation. The extension is only active within scopes where the namespace of the static host class has been imported. Since Java 8, Java has a similar feature called default methods, which are methods with a body declared on interfaces. As opposed to c -sharp extension methods, Java default methods are instance methods on the interface that declare them. Definition of default methods in classes that implement the interface is optional. If the class does not define the method, the default definition is used instead. Both the C# -sharp extension methods and the Java default methods allow a class to override the default implementation of the extension default method respectively. 
In both languages this override is achieved by defining a method on the class that should use an alternate implementation of the method. C-sharp scope rules defines that if a matching method is found on a class, it takes precedence over a matching extension method. In Java any class declared to implement an interface with default method is assumed to have the default method's implementations, unless the class implements the method itself. Partial methods Related to partial classes C-sharp allows partial methods to be specified within partial classes. A partial method is an intentional declaration of a method with several restrictions on the signature. The restrictions ensure that if a definition is not provided by any class part, then the method and every call to it can be safely erased. This feature allows code to provide a large number of interception points like the template method gov design pattern without paying any runtime overhead if these extension points are not being used by another class part at compile time. Java has no corresponding concept. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Virtual methods. Methods in C# -sharp are non-virtual by default and must be declared virtual explicitly if desired. In Java, all non-static non-private methods are virtual. Virtuality guarantees that the most recent override for the method will always be called, but incurs a certain runtime cost on invocation as these invocations cannot be normally inlined, and require an indirect call via the virtual method table. However, some JVM implementations, including the Oracle Reference implementation, implement inlining of the most commonly called virtual methods. Java methods are virtual by default although they can be sealed by using the final modifier to disallow overriding. There is no way to let derived classes define a new, unrelated method with the same name. This means that by default in Java, and only when explicitly enabled in C Sharp, new methods may be defined in a derived class with the same name and signature as those in its base class. When the method is called on a superclass reference of such an object, the deepest Overridden implementation of the base class method will be called according to the specific subclass of the object being referenced. In some cases, when a subclass introduces a method with the same name and signature as a method already present in the base class, problems can occur. In Java, this will mean that the method in the derived class will implicitly override the method in the base class, even though that may not be the intent of the designers of either class. To mitigate this, C# -sharp requires that if a method is intended to override an inherited method, the override keyword must be specified. Otherwise, the method will hide the inherited method. If the keyword is absent, compiler warning to this effect is issued, which can be silenced by specifying the new keyword. This avoids the problem that can arise from a base class being extended with a non-private method i.e. an inherited part of the namespace whose signature is already in use by a derived class. Java has a similar compiler check in the form of the at override method annotation, but it is not compulsory, and in its absence, most compilers will not provide comment but the method will be overridden. <laughs> Constant, immutable parameters 
In Java, it is possible to prevent reassignment of a local variable or method parameter by using the final keyword. Applying this keyword to a primitive type variable causes the variable to become immutable. However, applying final to a reference type variable only prevents that another object is assigned to it. It will not prevent the data contained by the object from being mutated. There is no C# equivalent. Both languages do not support essential feature of const correctness that exists in C, C++, which makes a method constant. Java defines the word constant arbitrarily as a static final field. Only these variables are capital only variables, where the names are separated with an underscore. A parameter that is only final is not considered as a constant, although it may be so in the case of a primitive data type or an immutable class, like a string. Topic: <laughs> Generator methods. Any C# -sharp method declared as returning ienumerable, ienumerator or the generic versions of these interfaces can be implemented using yield syntax. This is a form of limited, compiler-generated continuations and can drastically reduce the code needed to traverse or generate sequences, although that code is just generated by the compiler instead. The feature can also be used to implement infinite sequences, e.g., the sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Java does not have an equivalent feature. Instead generators are typically defined by providing a specialized implementation of a well-known collection or iterable interface, which will compute each element on demand. For such a generator to be used in A for each statement, it must implement interface java.lang.iterable. See also example Fibonacci sequence below. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Explicit interface implementation. C# -sharp also has explicit interface implementation that allows a class to specifically implement methods of an interface, separate to its own class methods, or to provide different implementations for two methods with the same name and signature inherited from two base interfaces. In either language, if a method or property in C# -sharp is specified with the same name and signature in multiple interfaces, the members will clash when a class is designed that implements those interfaces. An implementation will by default implement a common method for all of the interfaces. If separate implementations are needed because the methods serve separate purposes, or because return values differ between the interfaces C S explicit interface implementation will solve the problem, though allowing different results for the same method, depending on the current cast of the object. In Java there is no way to solve this problem other than refactoring one or more of the interfaces to avoid name clashes. Reference in /out parameters The arguments of primitive types e int, double, to a method are passed by value in Java whereas objects are passed by reference. This means that a method operates on copies of the primitives passed to it instead of on the actual variables. On the contrary, the actual objects in some cases can be changed. In the following example object string is not changed. Object of class A is changed. 
In C sharp, it is possible to enforce a reference with the ref keyword, similar to C++, and in a sense to C. This feature of C sharp is particularly useful when one wants to create a method that returns more than one object. In Java trying to return multiple values from a method is unsupported, unless a wrapper is used, in this case named, ref. Exceptions Checked exceptions Java supports checked exceptions along with unchecked exceptions. C# -sharp only supports unchecked exceptions. Checked exceptions force the programmer to either declare the exception thrown in a method or to catch the thrown exception using a try-catch clause. Checked exceptions can encourage good programming practice, ensuring that all errors are dealt with. However Anders Halesberg, chief c -sharp language architect, argues that they were to some extent an experiment in Java and that they have not been shown to be worthwhile except in small example programs. One criticism is that checked exceptions encourage programmers to use an empty catch block catch exception E, which silently swallows exceptions, rather than letting the exceptions propagate to a higher level level exception handling routine. In some cases, however, exception chaining can be applied instead, by re-throwing the exception in a wrapper exception. For example, if an object is changed to access a database instead of a file, an SQL exception could be caught and rethrown as an IO exception, since the caller may not need to know the inner workings of the object. However, not all programmers agree with this stance. James Gosling and others maintain that checked exceptions are useful, and misusing them has caused the problems. Silently catching exceptions is possible, yes, but it must be stated explicitly what to do with the exception, versus unchecked exceptions that allow doing nothing by default. It can be ignored, but code must be written explicitly to ignore it. Topic: <try>, Try catch finally. There are also differences between the two languages in treating the try finally statement. The finally block is always executed, even if the try block contains control passing statements like throw or return. In Java, this may result in unexpected behavior, if the try block is left by a return statement with some value, and then the finally block that is executed afterward is also left by a return statement with a different value. C# -sharp resolves this problem by prohibiting any control passing statements like return or break in the finally block. A common reason for using try finally blocks is to guard resource managing code, thus guaranteeing the release of precious resources in the finally block. C# -sharp features the using statement as a syntactic shorthand for this common scenario in which the dispose method of the object of the using is always called. A rather subtle difference is the moment a stack trace is created when an exception is being thrown. In Java, the stack trace is created in the moment the exception is created. The exception in the statement above will always contain the constructor's stack trace, no matter how often foo is called. In c -sharp on the other hand, the stack trace is created the moment «throw» is executed. In the code above, the exception will contain the stack trace of the first throw line. 
When catching an exception, there are two options in case the exception should be rethrown. Throw will just rethrow the original exception with the original stack, while throw E would have created a new stack trace. Topic: <laughs> Finally blocks. Java allows flow of control to leave the finally block of a try statement, regardless of the way it was entered. This can cause another control flow statement such as return to be terminated mid-execution. For example, in the above code, the return statement within try block causes control to leave it, and thus finally block is executed before the actual return happens. However, the finally block itself also performs a return. Thus, the original return that caused it to be entered is not executed, and the above method returns 1 rather than 0. Informally speaking, it tries to return 0 but finally returns 1. C# -sharp does not allow any statements that allow control flow to leave the finally block prematurely except for throw. In particular, return is not allowed at all. Go to is not allowed if the target label is outside the finally block, and continue and break are not allowed if the nearest enclosing loop is outside the finally block. Topic: <laughs> Generics. <laughs> 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 In the field of generics the two languages show a superficial syntactical similarity, but they have deep underlying differences. Topic type Erasure versus reified generics Generics in Java are a language-only construction, they are implemented only in the compiler. The generated class files include generic signatures only in form of metadata allowing the compiler to compile new classes against them. The runtime has no knowledge of the generic type system, generics are not part of the JVM. Instead, generics classes and methods are transformed during compiling via a process termed type erasure. During this, the compiler replaces all generic types with their raw version and inserts casts, checks appropriately in client code where the type and its methods are used. The resulting byte code will contain no references to any generic types or parameters see also generics in Java. The language specification intentionally prohibits certain uses of generics, this is necessary to allow for implementing generics through type erasure, and to allow for migration compatibility. C Sharp builds on support for generics from the virtual execution system, i.e., it is not just a language feature. The language is merely a front-end for cross-language generics support in the CLR. During compiling generics are verified for correctness, but code generation to implement the generics are deferred to class load time. Client code, code invoking generic methods, properties are fully compiled and can safely assume generics to be type-safe. This is called reification. At runtime, when a unique set of type parameters for a generic class, method, delegate is encountered for the first time, the class loader, verifier will synthesize a concrete class descriptor and generate method implementations. During the generation of method implementations all reference types will be considered one type, as reference types can safely share the same implementations. This is merely for the purpose of implementing code. Different sets of reference types will still have unique type descriptors, their method tables will merely point to the same code. 
The following list illustrates some differences between Java and C Sharp when managing generics. It is not exhaustive, C Sharp allows generics directly for primitive types. Java, instead, allows the use of box types as type parameters, e.g., list instead of list. This comes at a cost since all such values need to be boxed, unboxed when used, and they all need to be heap allocated. However, a generic type can be specialized with an array type of a primitive type in Java, for example list is allowed. Several third-party libraries implemented the basic collections in Java with backing primitive arrays to preserve the runtime and memory optimization that primitive types provide. <laughs> Migration compatibility Java's type erasure design was motivated by a design requirement to achieve migration compatibility, not to be confused with backward compatibility. In particular, the original requirement was, "...there should be a clean, demonstrable migration path for the collections APIs that were introduced in the Java 2 platform." This was designed so that any new generic collections should be passable to methods that expected one of the pre-existing collection classes. C# -sharp generics were introduced into the language while preserving full backward compatibility, but did not preserve full migration compatibility. Old code pre C# -sharp 2.0 runs unchanged on the new generics aware runtime without recompilation. As for migration compatibility, new generic collection classes and interfaces were developed that supplemented the non-generic .NET 1.0 X collections rather than replacing them. In addition to generic collection interfaces, the new generic collection classes implement the non-generic collection interfaces where possible. This prevents the use of new generic collections with pre-existing non-generic aware methods if those methods are coded to use the collection classes. Topic: <coughs> Covariance and contravariance. Covariance and contravariance is supported by both languages. Java has use site variants that allows a single generic class to declare members using both co and contravariants. C Sharp has defined site variants for generic interfaces and delegates. Variants is unsupported directly on classes but is supported through their implementation of variant interfaces. C Sharp also has used site covariance support for methods and delegates. Topic: <laughs> Functional programming. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Closures. A closure is an inline function that captures variables from its lexical scope. C# -sharp supports closures as anonymous methods or lambda expressions with full-featured closure semantics. In Java, anonymous inner classes will remain the preferred way to emulate closures until Java 8 has become the new standard. This is a more verbose construction. This approach also has some differences compared to real closures, notably more controlled access to variables from the enclosing scopes, only final members can be referenced. Java 8, however introduces lambdas that fully inherit the current scope and, in fact, do not introduce a new scope. 
When a reference to a method can be passed around for later execution, a problem arises about what to do when the method has references to variables, parameters in its lexical scope. C-sharp closures can access any variable, parameter from its lexical scope. In Java's anonymous inner classes, only references to final members of the lexical scope are allowed, thus requiring the developer to mark which variables to make available, and in what state possibly requiring boxing. <laughs> Lambdas and expression trees C# -sharp and Java feature a special type of inline closures called lambdas. These are anonymous methods, they have a signature and a body, but no name. They are mainly used to specify local function valued arguments in calls to other methods, a technique mainly associated with functional programming. C Sharp, unlike Java, allows the use of lambda functions as a way to define special data structures called expression trees. Whether they are seen as an executable function or as a data structure depends on compiler type inference and what type of variable or parameter they are assigned or cast to. Lambdas and expression trees play key roles in language integrated query link. Topic: Metadata. Topic: Preprocessing, compilation and packaging. Topic: Namespaces and file contents. In C# -sharp, namespaces are similar to those in C++. Unlike package names in Java, a namespace is not in any way tied to the location of the source file. While it is not strictly necessary for a Java source file location to mirror its package directory structure, it is the conventional organization. Both languages allow importing of classes e.g., import java, util, asterisk in java, allowing a class to be referenced using only its name. Sometimes classes with the same name exist in multiple namespaces or packages. Such classes can be referenced by using fully qualified names, or by importing only selected classes with different names. To do this, Java allows importing a single class e.g., import java, util, list. C# -sharp allows importing classes under a new local name using the following syntax using console. Topic system console. It also allows importing specializations of classes in the form of using int list system collections generic list. Java has a static import syntax that allows using the short name of some or all of the static methods, fields in a class e.g., allowing foo bar where foo can be statically imported from another class. C# -sharp has a static class syntax, not to be confused with static inner classes in Java, which restricts a class to only contain static methods. C# 3.0 introduces extension methods to allow users to statically add a method to a type, e.g., allowing foo.bar, where bar can be an imported extension method working on the type of foo. The Sun Microsystems Java compiler requires that a source file name must match the only public class inside it, while C# -sharp allows multiple public classes in the same file and puts no restrictions on the file name. 
C# 2.0 and later allows splitting a class definition into several files by using the partial keyword in the source code. In Java, a public class will always be in its own source file. In C#, -sharp, source code files and logical units separation are not tightly related. Topic: <laughs> Conditional compilation. Unlike Java, C# -sharp implements conditional compilation using preprocessor directives. It also provides a conditional attribute to define methods that are only called when a given compilation constant is defined. This way, assertions can be provided as a framework feature with the method debug, assert, which is only evaluated when the debug constant is defined. Since version 1.4, Java provides a language feature for assertions, which are turned off at runtime by default but can be enabled using the enable assertions or E switch when invoking the JVM. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Threading and asynchronous features. Both languages include thread synchronization mechanisms as part of their language syntax. Task-based parallelism for C# -sharp with .NET Framework 4.0, a new task-based programming model was introduced to replace the existing event-based asynchronous model. The API is based around the task and task classes. Tasks can be composed and chained. By convention, every method that returns a task should have its name postfixed with async. In C# 5, a set of language and compiler extensions was introduced to make it easier to work with the task model. These language extensions included the notion of async methods and the await statement that make the program flow appear synchronous. From this syntactic sugar the c -sharp compiler generates a state machine that handles the necessary continuations without developers having to think about it. Task-based parallelism for Java Java supports threads since JDK 1.0. Java offers a high versatility for running threads, often called tasks. This is done by implementing a functional interface, a java.lang.runnable interface, defining a single void no args method as demonstrated in the following example. Also, it's possible extending java.lang.thread as below. The usage of the mathread class will be as follow. Similar to C#, -sharp, Java has a higher level mechanism for working with threads. Executors can execute asynchronous tasks and also manage a group of subprocessors. All the threads of an executor services instance are handled in a pool. This executor service instance will be reused under the hood for revenant tasks, so its possible runs as many concurrent tasks as the programmer wants throughout the life cycle of the application using a single executor service instance. This is how the first thread example looks like using executors. The executor service instance also supports a callable interface, another single method interface like runnable but the signature of the contained method of callable returns a value. In this way, the lambda expression must also return a value. Calling the method get blocks the current thread and waits until the callable completes before returning the value in the example, a web page content. 
Topic: Additional features. Topic: Numeric applications. To adequately support applications in the field of mathematical and financial computation, several language features exist. Java's strict FP keyword enables strict floating point calculations for a region of code. Strict floating point calculations require that even if a platform offers higher precision during calculations, intermediate results must be converted to single, double. This ensures that strict floating point calculations return exactly the same result on all platforms. Without strict floating point a platform implementation is free to use higher precision for intermediate results during calculation. C# -sharp allows an implementation for a given hardware architecture to always use a higher precision for intermediate results if available, i.e. C# -sharp does not allow the programmer to optionally force intermediate results to use the potential lower precision of single, double. Although Java's floating point arithmetic is largely based on IEEE 754, standard for binary floating point arithmetic, certain features are unsupported even when using the strict FP modifier, such as exception flags and directed rounding. Things, abilities mandated by IEEE standard 754 see criticism of Java floating point arithmetic C# -sharp provides a built and decimal type which has higher precision but less range than the Java C# -sharp double the decimal type is a 128 bit data type suitable for financial and monetary calculations. The decimal type can represent values ranging from 1.0 times 10 minus 28 to approximately 7.9 times 1028 with 28 to 29 significant digits. The structure uses C# -sharp operator overloading so that decimals can be manipulated using operators such as plus, asterisk and like other primitive data types. The big decimal and big integer types provided with Java allow arbitrary precision representation of decimal numbers and integer numbers respectively. Java standard library does not have classes to deal with complex numbers. The big integer, and complex types provided with C# -sharp allow representation and manipulation of arbitrary precision integers and complex numbers, respectively. The structures use C# -sharp operator overloading so that instances can be manipulated using operators such as plus, asterisk and like other primitive data types. C# -sharp standard library does not have classes to deal with arbitrary precision floating point numbers. See software for arbitrary precision arithmetic. C# -sharp can help mathematical applications with the checked and unchecked operators that allow the enabling or disabling of runtime checking for arithmetic overflow for a region of code. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Language integrated query link C# -sharp S language integrated query link is a set of features designed to work together to allow in language querying abilities and is a distinguishing feature between C# -sharp and Java. Link consists of the following features. Extension methods allow existing interfaces or classes to be extended with new methods. Implementations can be shared or an interface can have a dedicated implementation. 
Lambdas allow for expression of criteria in a functional fashion. Expression trees allow a specific implementation to capture a lambda as an abstract syntax tree rather than an executable block. This can be utilized by implementations to represent criteria in a different language, e.g. in the form of an SQL where clause as is the case with e.g. link, link to SQL. Anonymous types and type inference supports capturing and working with the result type of a query. A query may both join and project over query sources that may lead to a result type that cannot be named. Query expressions to support a syntax familiar to SQL users Nullable lifted types to allow for a better match with query providers that support nullable types, like e.g. SQL. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Native interoperability. The Java Native Interface (JNI) feature allows Java programs to call non-Java code. However, JNI does require the code being called to follow several conventions and imposes restrictions on types and names used. This means that an extra adaption layer between legacy code and Java is often needed. This adaption code must be coded in a non-Java language, often C or C++. Java Native Access JNA allows easier calling of native code that only requires writing Java code, but comes at a performance cost. In addition, third-party libraries provide Java Component Object Model com bridging, e.g., Jacob free, and JIntegra for com proprietary, .NET Platform Invoke, P, Invoke offers the same ability by allowing calls from c -sharp to what Microsoft terms unmanaged code. Through metadata attributes the programmer can control exactly how the parameters and results are marshaled, thus avoiding the external glue code needed by the equivalent JNI in Java. P. Invoke allows almost complete access to procedural APIs such as Win32 or POSIX, but limited access to C++ class libraries. In addition, .NET Framework also provides a .NET COM bridge, allowing access to COM components as, if they were first-class .NET objects. C# -sharp also allows the programmer to disable the normal type checking and other safety features of the CLR, which then enables the use of pointer variables. When using this feature, the programmer must mark the code using the unsafe keyword JNI, P, invoke and unsafe. Code are equally risky features, exposing possible security holes and application instability. An advantage of unsafe, managed code over P, Invoke or JNI is that it allows the programmer to continue to work in the familiar c -sharp environment to accomplish some tasks that otherwise would require calling out to unmanaged code. An assembly program or library using unsafe code must be compiled with a special switch and will be marked as such. This enables runtime environments to take special precautions before executing potentially harmful code. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Runtime environments. Java the programming language is designed to execute on the Java platform via the Java Runtime Environment The Java platform includes the Java Virtual Machine and a common set of libraries. 
The JRE was originally designed to support interpreted execution with final compiling as an option. Most JRE environments execute fully or at least partially compiled programs, possibly with adaptive optimization. The Java compiler produces Java bytecode. Upon execution the bytecode is loaded by the Java runtime and either interpreted directly or compiled to machine instructions and then executed. C# -sharp is designed to execute on the common language runtime CLR. The CLR is designed to execute fully compiled code. The C# -sharp compiler produces common intermediate language instructions. Upon execution the runtime loads this code and compiles to machine instructions on the target architecture. Topic Examples Topic Input Output Example illustrating how to copy text one line at a time from one file to another, using both languages. Topic Integration of library defined types C# -sharp allows library defined types to be integrated with existing types and operators by using custom implicit explicit conversions and operator overloading as illustrated by the following example topic C# -sharp delegates and equivalent java constructs topic type lifting topic interoperability with dynamic languages This example illustrates how Java and C# -sharp can be used to create and invoke an instance of class that is implemented in another programming language. The Deep Thought class is implemented using the Ruby programming language and represents a simple calculator that will multiply two input values a and b when the calculate method is invoked. Topic Fibonacci sequence This example illustrates how the Fibonacci sequence can be implemented using the two languages. The C# -sharp version takes advantage of C# -sharp generator methods. The Java version takes the advantage of stream interface and method references. Both the Java and the C# -sharp examples use K and R style for code formatting of classes, methods and statements. Topic See also Comparison of C# -sharp and VB.net Comparison of Java and C++ Comparison of the Java and .NET platforms Java programming language <laughs>